Paul, speaking to the Galatians, says this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to those who have the household of faith. I want to remind you that one of the fruits of the Spirit is goodness. Uh, so even before we come up to that, verse 7 says, be not deceived, which means don't fool yourself. Don't you get misled. God is never mocked. Why? Whatsoever man sows, that shall he reap. What does he mean by don't be deceived? God is not mocked. Whatever it is you sow, you shall reap. Here's what it means. Simple. I have said something regardless of whether you believe it or not, does not change it. So don't fool yourself. As long as a man sows, he shall reap. So you could never come back in God's face and say, Aha! God, I tried opposite to what you said and I got through. You will never find yourself mocking God. God will never, you will never be able to say, I didn't know that. Because God said, whatsoever it is you sow, you shall reap. And that's a principle, that's a law that God has laid down that nobody can come up against. What you sow, you shall be. But here's what. Technically, what you sow, you will not reap. You will always reap more than you sow. You can never sow a seed and reap only a seed. This is why the Bible says, sow to the wind and you shall reap the whirlwind. You will always reap more than you sow. So therefore, if a man sows to the flesh, the only thing he will reap is of the flesh. So if you therefore invest in material things, as we see so many people doing, we have made material things the numero uno. We will forego Christianity, forego religion, forego our relationship with God, forego Sunday worship for the almighty dollar. We want house, we want land, we want property, we want bling, we want clothes, and we do it at whatever cost. Much of the theft that goes on today, people don't steal but for material things. That is what drives them. So you work hard for something and somebody wants it more than you because material things. They, and the Bible says, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap to the flesh. We have more men now, young men, dying by gunshot, trying to acquire material things. God said, you will never ever be able to point your finger at me and say, God, you were wrong. You will never be able to mock God. And every young man that goes after material things, their life is short. They will never live long. Because the more you go after material things, material things and happiness will always evade you. So therefore, God will never be mocked. We don't have to work so hard for all of these things. Let me tell you, you and I work hard. What do you think we're working hard to do? <laughs> yes, we, we, we will die in the process. <laughs> Three quarts of what we earn is to pay bills. Does that make sense? That you work the majority of your life to pay bills and to be able to pay a mortgage for a beautiful house for people to pass by and say, oh, look at that house. Is that all there is to life? Life must have more than that. Oh my goodness. I, I really believe that life must be more than that. And so therefore, the Bible says, He that sows to the Spirit shall reap everlasting life. 
We have got to come to the point that the things that we do and what we invest in is to achieve the numero one objective, eternal life. So whatsoever it is we do, we must know eternal life is our ultimate goal in everything that we do. So God said, and through Paul to the Galatians, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever it is you sow, you shall reap. So therefore, it's a principle. If you spend plenty, if you spend more than you earn, you'll always beg. There's nobody that could tell me, oh, I spend more than I earn, and look at how rich I am. Never. You shall always beg if you spend more than you earn. And God said, you will never come back and tell me I was wrong. Second thing, if you eat more than you burn, you'll always put on weight. It's a principle. Yeah? So, if you have a bad attitude, you'll always have wrecked relationships. Whatever it is you sow, whatever it is you put in, is what you will reap. And so, equally, if you are a loving person, you'll attract loving people into your life. Amen. It's a principle. Because loving people, people like to hang around loving people. If you have inner joy, happiness will always follow you. Because you have inner joy. Anyway. Sometimes, you know, how you ask yourself, how, how come you're looking so young? How come you're looking so, so, so fresh and so on? Sometimes it's the peace of mind that people have. That have them looking the way they look. So therefore, if you forgive, peace will always follow you. And so therefore, if people are following the things of the world, they will reap the rewards of the world. Carnival. Many people live for carnival. Many people live for happy hour on Friday. That's all they wait for. And their life, when they look back at their life, is empty. And after a certain number of years pass of all of that enjoyment for the, pre for the present, they look at their life and they ask their life themselves, what is life? What is man? Solomon told us. Solomon said, what is man? That thou art mind, well, it's not, it's not Solomon said, what is man that, that thou art mindful him, but Solomon said, vanity, vexation of spirit. After you acquired all of this, you leave it for a fool to spend. Yeah? Some people save up so much and they live off of so little that when they die, the people who inherit it don't value it. Yeah? So enjoy the sweat of your brow. Don't leave it for fools, the Bible says. Because they are indeed fools, especially if they never earned it themselves. But I'm not saying go and spend it all, but enjoy a certain measure of it. Because you've worked hard. Take yourself out. Say, self, I'm taking you out tonight. <laughs> I'm going and enjoy the fruits of my labor. I'm going to reward myself with what I've worked hard for. And that's what the Bible says, because the Bible says the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Work hard, yes, but enjoy the fruits of your labor. So the Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he shall he reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And then he goes on with the next verse. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially to them who have the household of faith. I believe, personal belief, in this century, we have probably the largest number of people who are ungrateful in all the years that we've ever had. Trust me. Because, you know, long time, when you do something for somebody, there was such gratitude. There is such appreciation for what you do. They will call you. They'll write you. They'll remind you that you even forgot you did that for them. And they are so appreciative. Today, you do things for people, 
And it's as though you never did it. They really don't care. It is not something that they take as valuable. So we have a, a society that we work around people, we work around neighbors, or we operate around people that they don't appreciate things. And here's what is the natural result for that. Sometimes you get tired. And you tell yourself, I'm not being nice to people anymore. People too ungrateful. All of us know what they're talking about. Yeah, because you have been good to people. You've been good to your children. You've been good to your, your, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your relatives. You've been good to some people. You have sacrificed what you wanted to make sure that somebody else was good. You did not ask for payment. You don't want payment. Even if somebody tried to pay you, you really don't want it. You will refuse it. All you require is gratitude. Is that too much to ask? So you come to a point that when you... And you know one of the most hopeful things? Do good for somebody and hear what they say about you. Behind your back. You know how, how hurtful that is? That you could... That could transform you and make you say to yourself, not me and helping people anymore. Because when you help people, it does backfire and hit you. Yeah? I'm telling you. Sometimes even you're helping some people who are... I, I was in Scarborough one day. And a man came up to me and he says, Boss man, things are real bad, you know. I just want something to eat. I'm hungry. I ain't eat for a long time. And I had a little bit of change of me and I was studying. But if I give him, I can't do what I wanted to do and so on. But I watched the man and I said, my goodness, dear, my mother would cry shame on me. If I selfishly keep this money and don't help him, I reach into my pocket, I pull out the money, I say, partners, go and get something to eat. So I'm now doing without. He leave, he gone. I went inside a place, do business, walk out back and I come out back. He cannot remember me. He came up to me and said, partners, you have any money on you there? I ain't eat for a long time. I said, what did he say, man? <laughs> Less than 10 minutes ago, I gave him money to go and get something to eat. I said, you have no money at all. He said, not a seven. I said, you haven't asked anybody for the day. He said, no, he done now come out and now asking people. Give <laughs> I was tempted to, from then on, any vagrant or anybody who asked me for the day, I'm not giving them none because all of them... No, but. I would not give a vegan money because the last time I used to buy that, you had to buy a cigarette. Right. So, so you see, and, and, and that is what causes us to tell us that we become cynical and say, and we brand all of them and say we're not giving any of them. So, this is what Galatians is saying here. Don't be wary. You get tired because you have been schemed so often. Sometimes somebody asks you for money or asks you for something that you think is to help them and recognize that they did not use it for, the, for what you, you gave them. But do you think it is right that somebody else, not to say personally, somebody else asks for help? Do you think it is right not to help them because of the previous, the previous Right. And that's what the Bible is talking about. Don't be wary. Yes, continue to do good. Forget what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. No, I don't have to give the same vagrant every time. You understand? I met a gentleman and he told me his, his girl just gave birth in the hospital. She can't produce milk. And he needs to buy milk to take up to the hospital. I felt, I mean, I have children, so I know what it is like to be in that state. And so he was talking about how, you know, he didn't get paid. He was supposed to, he worked for a man and the man didn't pay him and so on. Bam, gave him the money. It's a face I know. So I know a brother of his. So I said, oh, how is your brother and his baby coming along? He said, brother, baby? <laughs> is it my brother and what you went? 
I said, no, I met your brother. He told me his, his lady made a baby. And he said, that boy don't even have a woman in his life. <laughs> what do you do? And you keep getting caught over and over again. <laughs> I'm on the other side. <laughs> Is he? But here's one. I don't have to give the same people. Because the Bible says, do not throw your pearls before swine. Things that are valuable, you don't give to people who don't appreciate it. So I need to know, instead of getting wary and say, stop lend, I stop give people and I stop being nice. Because, because when you're nice to people, they'll take advantage of you because that's the no normal way we are to react in. Because that's how we, how we, we become. That these people change us from the nice people we are into somebody we don't like who we have become. So we've got to therefore learn to now start to differentiate and make wiser decisions when we're helping people. But never get weary. That's what the Bible says in Galatians. Don't be weary in well-doing, for you shall reap in due season the benefits and fruits. Fruits. Is what you're waiting for. That's why you reap. Because remember, you sow to the spirit and you will reap life everlasting. So when you sow, you will reap in due season. Due season means at the right time. Not now. But let me tell you, God keeps a record of your good deeds. And you are storing up treasure in heaven by your good deeds. It does not give you salvation. So don't get carried away that if I help all of these people, God is going to guarantee me salvation. There's a system for salvation. And salvation is by grace, through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it has nothing to do with works. But God will never forget your labor of love, the Bible says. He will record it. And you will be rewarded in due season. Let me tell you, somebody could come from somewhere who you never help and give you a blessing because of somebody else you blessed. So don't look back to get back your blessing from the same person. Don't give people because you feel you could get it back. That's a business transaction. You give because it's the right thing to do. And from somewhere else, God is going to bless you. God has guaranteed us that. So don't be wary. And let me tell you, God will never promise you and renege on his promise. He is going to do it. And that's why he told the church in Galatia that don't be wary in well-doing, for you shall reap in due season. If you faint not, meaning if you don't get tired of it, and give up. Yes, I have met so many people who have done so much. I have seen people who have given up of their, of their life, given up their heart, given up their wealth, given up of all that they have. And, and, and they, my parents used to say, cut their nose and spoil their face. And people did not appreciate it. Did not appreciate it. And sometimes don't even take care of the thing that you gave them, that you yourself wanted. But he says, if you don't get tired and if you don't feed, you shall reap if you feed not. And he says, therefore, in verse 10, as you therefore have opportunity, the opportunity will come. He says, as you therefore have opportunity, do good to all men. All men. Do not select the people you're not going to do good to. Don't look at color, don't look at race. Don't look at gender. Don't look at their, their financial situations. Look at the need. Do good unto all men, especially to the household of faith. God has a kingdom policy of how we operate in this kingdom. That we must have all things common. All things common. Nobody should live filthy rich in the kingdom while in the same kingdom, somebody is dirt poor. Ever. We should never watch the divide 
of, of possessions and wealth and whatever it is people have be so wide that we cannot now come back and bring people back to an equal state. All things come on. That is the kingdom policy of what we do. This is, has nothing to do with a democracy as we have in a, or in a republic where you, 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 you acquire wealth and you have in one country people who are living in lavish circumstances and in the same country, sometimes just across the wall, people are living in squalor. That's not the kingdom system. The kingdom system, the Bible says, we are one accord in one accord. We are one accord. <laughs> That's how we do it. We have all things common. And when we see, we don't have to wait for somebody to come and say, I have a need. It would be nice if they do that. But sometimes we can see this person has so, um, some children and I see this situation with children and I can discreetly go to that person and say, can I help? Is there something I could do? Why? Because I have and you apparently don't. You see, and we must always keep our eyes out as we therefore have opportunities that though we're searching for the opportunity, do good unto all men. Inside of your budget for the month should be your contribution to the Lord's work. That is known. Inside of your budget should be your payment of your bills. Inside of your budget should be money for savings. But inside of your budget should be to give to somebody who has a need. You should put aside a certain amount of money and say, for this month, I am looking for opportunity to do good unto somebody who has a need. Do you have that in your budget? How many people have that in their budget? not the last one. And that's the one that we often neglect. Let me tell you, when we found that philosophy of putting inside of our budget to look for somebody who has a need, you'll be surprised that while we thought we had little, but when you are doing that, it multiplies so much because God said it's more blessed to give than to receive. You don't know where it comes from. When you give somebody here, somebody comes by you and says, Brother Mike, look at Hannah Fig, look at this, look at that, look at this, and so on. And it just comes from nowhere. It does not have to be the same thing you gave to somebody. You understand? But you always be on the lookout. As you therefore have opportunity, do good unto all men. Now, that's a philosophy that's hard for us to now build in. Because you know why? Because we try to make sure, this is how the average person does. My bills must be paid first. I must make sure the bank never called me. I must make sure the house has food. I must make sure that the vehicle has fuel. And do all of that. And then after that, oh, yes, collection. Well, yes, I'm going to give her $5 there and so on. And then we end it off there. No, 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 no. Build into your budget to help someone. To deal with. And I'm not talking about giving people money necessarily. Eh? That is also one of it. But inside of your budget, you might be able to purchase something for somebody. And I think Jai talk about it. So sometimes with these people who have need, don't give them the money. Say, come with me, let's go and get you something to eat. And, and, and make sure that is consciously part of your budget. Never mind with some of that, because when I was studying in Jamaica, a lady was there with a little child. The little child was frail, the clothes dirty. And she came up and she said, listen, sir, do you have any money that I could go and get some, something to eat for, for this child to eat? The child was there literally like trembling and so on. I said, miss, um, I, I'll take you across at the supermarket, which was just across the road. Whatever it is the child needs, I'll buy, I'll buy it. She said, no, 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 no. just give, give me the money. And I, 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 I said, no, I, because I want to make sure, because if I give you $10, but she needs more than that, I'd rather pay the more, and so on. And that lady fought me not to take her into this thing to get her something for the child to eat. Do you think she really wanted something for the child to eat? No, she's using the child as a pawn. She's using the child as a pawn. It makes you get wary of helping people. 
When you could stoop to that law to use a child in order to get, you to, to get people to give you money, you have really lost it. And makes you fed up of people and say that people are not genuine. But Paul says, don't be weary. Don't give up. Don't be tired. Find somebody else and do it to somebody else. Because you shall weep if you don't faint. I want to challenge people. Out of your small budget. The Bible says if you are not faithful in little, you cannot be faithful in much. Out of the little money you have, tell yourself, Lord, this month... I'm putting aside $100 for anybody I meet that is in need. You'll be surprised how God will bless you. You shall reap if you fail not. Has the word blessed you tonight? I hope it did. I hope it did. Let's stand and sing. Well, is there any question? Because we do have time for any question or, or comment. <laughs> no question? Yes. Um, I think you mentioned it with something your diary said um, in terms of instead of giving any money. So they might know it's um, dead. Uh, when they would, they would constantly have stuff to give people, like if they have water, bottle of water and stuff. And nobody asks for it, they would open the water and go to the back and give them it. Okay. Uh, if they want uh, a pack of, uh, like a sari, most people say a sari, they would open it for them, go to the back and give them it. Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, they can have to sell it. Right, okay, okay. Right, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. The old people, they didn't have much, and many of them did not have a work, a, a secular job. The father used to be in the garden and the mother stayed home or helped out also to help the chickens in the yard and so on. But you know one of the things that in growing up, and some of you all never had that experience, and some of you all know what I'm talking about. When your parents took you to visit some of these old people, when you leave those people yard, is that chicken they give you? A live chicken? They give you cassava? That they actually go out there and pull the cassava? Right there, and when you leave there, you leverage so much from people who are so little. From people who are so little. They believed in giving. That's why the old generation um, flourished so well. The reason why we will not flourish as much as we they do, because we hoard. We try not to get rid of what we have. We don't trust people. We don't give people and so on. And be because we've been bitten so often, so we don't give. Not all of us. So I don't want to, 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 brand, to, to, to brand you all. But I'm, I'm speaking in its general sense. And so what we have to start doing is being like those old time people where they give out of their little. 